Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is our regular Monday edition of Five Things We Learned. Of course, this week it's from the Tottenham Hotspur 1. Liverpool 1 game. Now, this one I couldn't be at this week, which is a shame, but I don't know if you've seen our uh, fan cams on YouTube, Craig Vi getting to know what the fans felt after the game. It was great to see what all those people who were actually in the ground were thinking. But here are the five things that I felt we learned, having watched it on TV, and I've actually watched it a few times now because I'm trying to get my head around the first, a few things. First up, this has been talked a lot about a lot in the press, uh, and that's because it's true. The fact that in games like that, especially, where the high press is put on us, we miss Moussa Dembele like a year ago. We wouldn't even have realised how important he was to us. But when the high press is on us, and fair play to Liverpool, they were absolutely outstanding. And Jurgen Klopp's got his team playing exactly how his Dortmund team were playing, just pressing with their front six all on us, so we couldn't really play it out very easily. But when Moussa Dembele's on the pitch, we know we can give it to him, and no one will get the ball off him. They bounce off his, his strong body, and he turns out, and that gives, in turn, more space for him to get the ball to Deli Ali, Christian Eriksen, and Eric Lamella. Unfortunately, Wanyama and Dai are not as confident receiving the ball from their centre-backs with men right on them. And so it was going straight back and then it would go to Vorm and then it would go long. Or even in that uh, case after about four or five minutes where Christian Eriksen got it at his feet, his first touch wasn't good enough, he lost the ball and Liverpool should have scored. Michel Vorm made an absolutely brilliant save. We'll get more onto that uh, later on. Obviously, Moussa Dembele, only one more match of his suspension remaining. We've done well, I think, to get five points in these opening three games without him. Um, we're on exactly the same points tally as we were uh, in the corresponding fixtures last year, which I think is really interesting. But importantly, we were only on two points at this stage, uh, I think. Or, yeah, we were on two points at this stage last season at the beginning. So it's a great improvement. Got Stoke away next. Stoke, bottom of the league. Haven't had a good start. The uh, nerves will be shredding over there, uh, the Britannia when we head down there. Is it still called the Britannia? May even have changed, got a new sponsor, but anyway, at Stokes Away Ground. And uh, let's hope we can pick up another win there. <laughs> I don't know if it'll get as good as it did when we beat Stoke there 4-0 at the back end of last season, but if we can get a win there and then Musa to come back in the next game, it'll feel like he's never really been away because we'll have got eight points from the first four games and then he can come in. And I think if that happened and we were unbeaten when Musa comes into the team, we can go on a real surging run, just like we did at this stage last season where we were unbeaten in 15 games. If we could really get on a run like that at this point, it feels a lot like we'd be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. But as it stands at the moment, United, City, Chelsea, nine points out of nine, looking ominous. Whereas ourselves, Liverpool and Arsenal, who you'd like to think will be up there or thereabouts, as I mentioned, five points and four points respectively. Anyway, so the first thing I felt we really learned, which we knew anyway, Moussa Dembele needed more than ever for matches like that against the high press. Second thing, uh, mentioned him there losing the ball uh, too easily in the early stages. Christian Eriksen, it feels a little bit, I've spoken about this uh, last week I think as well, feels a little bit like his mind may be on other things. Now obviously a lot of rumours that he's about to sign this new five-year deal. Let's be honest, we're not footballers. It's really easy for us to sit at home and say, oh, you know, they've got the easy life. Things like that shouldn't affect them. But Christian Eriksen may well be getting offers from other clubs. Uh, Daniel Levy will no doubt be trying to push down the wages that he wants. And in reality, those things do affect you on a day-to-day -day basis. The way I've seen Christian Eriksen this season so far and in pre-season, his touch just isn't up to it at the moment. His shooting, he's had a few chances to shoot from about 23, 24 yards in a couple of games. He's, he's kind of pulled at them all. He's rushing things a little bit. He just doesn't seem to be being as instinctive uh, as he is when he's at his best. Now, does that mean I want him not to sign the five-year deal? No, of course not. He's a fantastic player. When he's back to his best, which he will be, he is as important as anyone else at our club. I wouldn't be afraid of, of letting him uh, have a little stint on the bench for a game or two just to show him that if he's not playing at his top level, he needs to work harder and harder. And I don't think he's not a worker, but I think that kind of thing can help. It showed when Deli Ali, who'd been ill uh, last week, was on the bench against Palace. When he came on, you could tell that he was really bang up for it and zip up for it. And I think it wouldn't be the worst thing to give Christian Eriksen maybe a game on the bench. But will that happen? I'm not so sure. Pochettino, very loyal. And he knows them better than we do. Of course he does. He sees them in training every game. Christian Eriksen hopefully will sign that deal this week and maybe as well with the addition of a few players before the deadline day shuts. Obviously lots of rumours and Kudu now officially training with the club even though that deal hasn't gone through. And lots of talk of Isco, us being interested in Isco. Now he is a great player and would be a perfect player to bring in to really put the pressure on uh, Christian and Deli Ali and Eric Lamella. Make sure they're playing at their best all the time because he's such a talent. But 
whether we could afford his wages and, and whether that is realistically going to happen, I don't know. But let's not forget, the last time we were in the Champions League, uh, Daniel Levy pulled out a surprise, rabbit out of the hat, last seconds of the deadline day, went to Harry Redknapp and said, do you want a present? I can get you Rafa van der Vaart. Harry said yes, and the rest is history. Rafa van der Vaart was excellent for us, especially in our season in the Champions League. So if Levy could pull off an Isco-style surprise for us, I think we'd all be happy, and it may even push Christian Eriksen to get back to his top form. The third thing I want to talk about in terms of things we've learnt, I think Toby Alderweireld back. Well, he's never not been at his best, but obviously he was away at the Euros all summer, and it's taken players a bit longer to get back into their stride. But against Liverpool, I thought he was absolutely top-notch. He kept them quiet. Uh, there was a time with a few minutes to go, which I couldn't believe, where they were like four on two against us, and Toby Alderweireld put in an, an unbelievable tackle. And he really is the best reader of the game as a defender that I've seen at Spurs. Apart from Ledley King, I think they're very similarly brilliant at reading the game. Uh, and obviously he's good in the air. That save from Mignolet from his header from the corner was unbelievable. He's always dangerous from corners and set pieces. And also just a fantastic long mid-range passer and he can beat a man as well. He's just an all-round defender and to have got him, I've said it enough times, but to have got him for £12 million when you see the cost of some of the other defenders around at the moment, absolute steal. I wouldn't be surprised if Daniel Levy got him on another new deal soon just to tie him up, show him how important he is to the club. He should be up there with the top earners at our club as far as I'm concerned because he is just as vital to us as Harry Kane is, as Christian Eriksen is uh, and as Hugo Lloris is. Absolute rock at the back and uh, it's great to have him and Jan Vertonghen back who I thought played well as well. Fourth thing I want to talk about, Eric Dyer. Now, Carl Walker went off early on. It looked to me like it might be a muscle injury, which was really frightening, but I was delighted to hear that he was actually just feeling a bit sick. He seemed to have picked up what Deli Alley had had the previous week. So he'll be fit again. But it put a lot of pressure on us because we didn't have Kieran Trippier on the bench, uh, I don't think. And so Eric Dyer went to right back. Deli Alley came into midfield. Jansen went up front and then Harry Kane dropped deeper. At the time, I thought that was good for us because it would enable us to play deeper past the Liverpool press. Liverpool still managed to play really well. Uh, their central centre defender, Matip, impressed me, won a lot of first balls, and the second balls in midfield were coming to, to Liverpool a lot of the time. But Eric Dyer dropping into right back, remember what a great crosser the football is. We got an equaliser in that game because on his left foot, when it looked like he could whip it in with his right, he pulled it onto his left foot, great cross, Lamella nodded it on, and a great finish from Danny Rose. Eric Dyer, just an absolutely fantastic, versatile footballer. Uh, defensive midfield has to be where he stays. Uh, I think he maybe thinks he's going to end up being a centre-back, but he's so good in uh, defensive midfield. But the fact that he can also play at full-back and cross as well as that, that wasn't even the only good cross he put in. He put in some fantastic ones with his right foot as well. And I think, especially when Janssen's on the pitch as well as Kane, we need to be getting more crosses in, as many as we can, because goals come from crosses a lot. The stats show it. Defenders find it hard to defend. Goalkeepers don't know whether to come or stay, and it puts panic amongst the opposition. And when we start getting crosses in against Liverpool, that for me is when we had our best spell and when we look most dangerous. Um, so we're just very lucky to have someone like Eric Dyer, who's so versatile, can fill in in three different positions uh, and never really complains about it either. Uh, let me know what you think about him. I would sign him up, get him on another new deal, just give him a new deal every week, make him our next captain. Uh, actually, speaking about the captain, I wasn't going to talk about this, but. Let me know, has Harry Kane ever scored for Spurs when he's had the captain, uh, captain's armband on? Uh, good news is after international break, 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 I think Hugo will be back and he'll be captain. But I just feel it adds another layer of pressure to Harry that he doesn't need. He just needs to be thinking about his basic game all the time because that's when he scores the most goals, when it's just instinctive. But um, I don't think that the captaincy really works for Harry. But let me know what you guys think. Finally, last thing I want to talk about in terms of five things we learned from the Liverpool game, Michel Vaughan mentioned him earlier, said we'd talk about him. I think he's the best backup goalkeeper in the Premier League. Let me know what you think. Are there better ones? I don't think there are. Michel Vorm has taken a, a fair bit of stick in his time at Spurs, but for me, that's because he's had to come in and play just one game at a time. Never got a run of games. This is his first chance to get a run of games. That save he made after four or five minutes with his feet, unbelievable. The sweeper keeping he was doing, beating Mane to the ball. He's one of the quickest players in the division and really impressed me um, to the point where I'm kind of upset that we didn't go for him. I know 36 million is a lot of money, but he can play anywhere in that three behind or up front, and he really stretched the play. And now I think... Pochettino is trying to get a player like that with pace and it might have been better if we'd just gone out and got Mane early doors. Um, but realistically, Jurgen Klopp and the pull of Liverpool, their traditions, the big club, they've got a big new stand there as well. I can see why he would have wanted to go there. But Michel Vorm, 
just going back to it, absolutely unbelievable. I'm glad that he's had a run of a couple of games uh, in a row, shown us what we've got, and now the fans will stay off his back because when it comes to him playing in, say, the League Cup or the FA Cup, you know, he will be a great option for us because when it comes to the Premier League and the Champions League, it will always be Hugo, number one, our skipper, our leader. OK, guys, that's been the five things I felt we learned from the Tottenham Hotspur 1, Liverpool 1 game. Let me know what you thought of it all in the comments box below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. Hi, guys. Craig Vi here for Spurred on TV. I'm out here with Rob. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing, Rob? Good yeah, man. Good. And we've just seen Spurs get a draw.